Welcome back everyone to YouTube's premier storyboarding channel, Ink & Grow Rates. At the time of this recording, it is the morning after the 2020 presidential election. And I gotta tell you folks, the past 24 hours have been one hell of a year. What do you say we just jump into some blissfully stress-free storyboard? You know, I think that would be best. In our last exciting episode, we managed to get all the boring preliminary stuff out of the way. We went through the script, assembled all the reference photos that the director sent us, took some photos of our miniatures, blatantly ripped off a few shots from a major motion picture, and more importantly, learned a few valuable lessons about ourselves along the way. In part two of this episode, we finally get to start having a little bit of fun and actually draw up this mouth-watering flame royal beast. Be sure to stick around to the end where I'll play the actual finished commercial for you alongside the storyboards we worked so hard to put together. Sound good? Come no further ado, here's part two. Okay, so right out of the gate, the first thing I'm going to do is start dropping in all of those previously drawn Burger King mascot heads. Even with that motorcycle helmet curveball thrown at me, you can see that having these heads drawn up in advance is absolutely saving me valuable time. Once I've got the heads into position, I'll pull up a photo reference of the King's royal outfit and start fleshing out the rest of the bodies. Now, for this opening close-up, I can get away with just loosely sketching in a city background because it's going to be a shallow depth of field and I know I'm just going to go ahead and blur it out anyway. Moving on to frame 2, it's pretty much the same deal. I'm going to fill in the rest of the king's body and then just trace the moped and the background's lickety-split. This is where all of that boring preliminary work we did in the last episode is really going to pay off. From this point forward, it's just going to be the same repeating pattern. Now, on this particular day, I had three jobs lined up. This Burger King spot that I'm drawing now, obviously. A Lincoln commercial with Matthew McConaughey, which I actually put up on this very YouTube channel a few months ago. And a handful of Walmart spots featuring Jennifer Gardner, which I'm hoping to upload in the coming weeks. I got paid $850 a day per job, and each job took two days to complete. So I ended up getting paid $2,550 a day for two days in a row. And that is not an uncommon scenario. I routinely do two or three jobs a day during the busy season, and the only reason I'm able to churn them out so quickly is because of the time-saving methods that I've developed over the years. Look, the boards I draw do end up looking pretty fantastic, and they're always done on time, which is why I'm in high demand. But let's be honest, is there anything that I'm doing here that you couldn't do yourself? If you employed the same tools and techniques that I'm using, couldn't it be you who's pulling in $2,500 a day? And speaking of time-saving tools and techniques, you're about to watch me use one of my favorites. For the first 20 years or so of my career, I drew with pen and paper. There is nothing like the feel of dragging a pen over paper. Nothing compares to the way that the ink just bleeds into the fibers of the page. I love it. And for the longest time, I held out and I refused to go digital. What an absolute fool I was. I never took into consideration the power of drawing digitally, and one of the more powerful abilities that drawing digitally gives you is the ability to save and eventually recycle assets. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you've seen me do this before. I've got a folder on my hard drive where I keep categorized sheets of stock assets. I've got pages of pre-drawn assets for things like cars, dogs, suburban streets, background extras, any elements that I feel I can reuse in the future. When I'm done with each job and the boards have been delivered, I go through them and cannibalize anything which may be useful to have in my back pocket during upcoming jobs. For today's spot, I'm going to make liberal use of my document for city backgrounds. On most jobs, you'll receive a PDF with photos of the locations they intend to shoot in. What you're looking at here are various city streets which I've drawn up over the past few years. Usually, I just go ahead and trace the location photo that's given to me. I've now gotten to the point where I've got quite the collection built up, so I'm just going to go ahead and start dropping these into the backgrounds. Now, am I cheating when I'm doing this? Mm, depends on your perspective. I'm fairly certain my wife and two daughters aren't bothered by it when they come home to their 3,500 square foot house in our Santa Clarita gated community. In fact, I'm pretty sure to think I'm a goddamn genius. Don't you agree, your highness? Instead of seeing it as cheating, I prefer to think of it as my not-so-secret modern-day artist's formula for success, which is as follows. My talents as an artist, plus my storytelling skills, plus the utilization of modern technology divided by a whole lot of I don't give a fuck equals a ridiculous amount of money. If you can come up with a superior formula, then by all means lay it on me, brother. And incidentally, 
If you think that what I'm doing now is cheating, just wait until that artificial intelligence dam breaks. In the next two to five years, when the inevitable advances in quantum computing and artificial intelligence arrive at our doorsteps, I absolutely intend to capitalize. I expect that by that point, I'll be doing five or six jobs a day. I mean, have you had a look at the latest Photoshop update? For all intents and purposes, Adobe Sensei is still in its infancy, and already we've got things like the match font feature, the select subject algorithm, sky replacement, and the absolutely bonkers smart portrait neural filters. Imagine what we'll be in five years. Please, don't let your misguided sense of artistic integrity keep you stagnating on the sidelines while the rest of us use these tools to become wealthy. Believe me, you're not doing yourself any favors. I've been poor before. There's no nobility in being poor. Alright, checking back in with our Burger King storyboards over here, it is business as usual. I'm continuing to capitalize on all of that preliminary groundwork we did in the last episode, and I'm now just effortlessly cruising towards the finish line. In fact, here are the first two pages of completed storyboards already. Moving on to page three. At this point, I trust you get the gist of what I'm doing here. I'm just tracing over the models and or location photos that are laid out in the last episode. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up a bit. And that brings pages three and four to completion. Just two more pages to go, we can call this job a success. I sent the roughs out to the director, and his only response was to ask for this one additional frame. So, once I draw that up, another job will be put to rest. And that is that, folks. Now, before we watch the actual commercial, I thought we'd take a moment to look back at the complete set of boards that we drew up one last time. From the grill to your doorbell cam, the king is now delivering with Uber Eats. Use code delivery king for zero dollar delivery fee. All right, 
that is just about gonna wrap it up for this episode. Now, one of the things you might have noticed while watching the finished commercials, just how many shots were discarded from the boards. This is not unusual. In fact, it happens quite frequently. So it's not uncommon for a director to want to generate as many ideas as they can in the storyboard phase, and then just sort through them in the edit. Occasionally, you'll also get a situation where the director is planning to cut together a 60 second version of Spot just for his reel. Either way, I did my job. I get paid the same regardless of which shots they use, so why do I care? If you have any questions about what I did here today, or if you just want to tell me how much you hate me, drop on down to the comment section below and hit me up, Buttercup. As always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining and would like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Till next time, this is Vinny Delay with Ink and Grow Rich.